Hello, everyone, and it's a good day because we're going to talk about red fountain pen inks. Um, red is really a great color. It's probably my favorite color, and I have just a boatload of red inks, and I've picked out quite a few, probably too many, so um, I will probably need to adjust um, the uh, amount of ink I'm going to try to um, show you today. So first off, um, I'm going to start with a favorite ink of mine, and I am a terrible person because I like to um, move my inks into large size bottles. It's, it's kind of a mania. I don't like the little teeny tiny bottles. Um, and Jungle Volcano comes in, ah, and this is a Krishna ink. Um, I've, I've put it, uh, put several of the little tiny bottles into this one large bottle. Um, and this is Jungle Volcano. Um, it is one of the most amazing inks I've ever seen. I can't think of a more unusual ink. And as many people may realize, um, it, Krishna inks often, at least the red ones, um, they are, they are susceptible to nib crud, as you can see from the, around the bottle and then from all the little, um, little chunks here that come off. It is a, an exceptional color and the sheen is out of control completely. It's like, oh, it's one of the most sheening inks I've ever seen before. Um, I do have that loaded up in a pen, but first um, let's take a look at a swab because that will give you a bit of an idea of the color. It is a, an orangey red, and so it's, I think, it's supposed to look like lava, jungle volcano. Um, but it's just a really extraordinary ink. Um, let me put that away. And uh, you will see, that is just this, Exceptional inks, let me just say, exceptional inks m sometimes require exceptional care, we'll say. Um, uh, they sometimes present little challenges in terms of nib crud and, um, and this, uh, you know, uh, kind of dried up sh uh, shedding that it does uh, from the bottle. Um, but... Yeah, and so I will show you a bit of what I mean by the nib crud. It doesn't bother me, it's just ink. Um, uh, some people are just disturbed by it. Um, it's just ink. So you can wash this off, you can wipe it off, no problem. But, you know, there are sensitive people out there. Um, but I would have to say that... Uh, um, mm, 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 mm. okay, so it, I haven't used this in a while and it does tend to dry out a bit. Um, it, do, 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 yeah. But once it gets going, it's good. All right. And a lot of you are saying, I can't. I can't handle that. Um, it is it is quite um, extraordinary. So that's it's it's a personal favorite of mine. Um, I think you can see some of the shade or some of the um, sheening and the shading. It's it does everything. I mean, it really does everything. Um, a little more, um, takes a little bit more care. All right. Um, the next ink that I'm really enjoying is Diamine's Firefly. 
This is another orangey ink, uh, orangey red, I'm sorry. Um, and it also has sparkles. So we'll see, there we have our sparkles at the bottom. Um, and like most red sparkly inks, um, if you shake, you can get the sparkles. And I am a, I am a mad shaker. I enjoy shaking my inks. Some people don't like to disturb the inks. I like to wake them up. So here's the firefly. Um, that's quite something. And I have that in a um, Bainu pen from Russia. I'm not happy about what's going on between the Russians and the Ukrainians, but um, and that, so it, that's what it is. Um, so um, a nice little pen. Um, and let's see how, yeah, so there we are. This is Firefly from Diamine. Or is it Diamine? I think it's Diamine. I'm going to go with that. All right. So there we are, um, Firefly. And we'll put you away. And yeah, so we're getting a little sparkliness. Um, if I turn the page to the light a little bit. All right, we're never going to get through all these inks if I go so slowly. Um, Irori, Sailor. As you can see, most red inks are a little troublesome when it comes to the flakes that come off the bottle and the cap. Um, this is an amazing color, uh, a color I am very fond of. If you want a super bright um, red, candy apple red, it's got a lot of pink in it, um, that, this, this is one that will set you free, um, as they say. I have that loaded in a um, Pelican um, 720, if I'm not mistaken, 710, an M710, um, the Toledo pen made in Toledo um, with a numbered um, filigree in silver, in uh, sterling silver. It is a lovely, lovely pen. Um, I love my pelicans, possibly more, well, my watermans and my pelicans. Those are the ones I absolutely love. Um, and this is Irori, um, which I believe means hearth. Um, the fire in, in the kitchen area. Um, and that is by Sailor. Okay. And that is a splendid ink. Um, next on my list um, is an ink that I like fairly well. Um, I know there's some uh, debate about Ackerman inks. I enjoy them very well um, in general. Um, I've had, you know, pleasant experiences with them. Um, this ink is very, it's, it's a very nice um, shade of red, which imitates some of the Flemish painting of the, the Golden Age of um, Flemish art. Um, and this is, of course, Gerlachen von Jan Steen. Jan Steen is, um, is, a, is a one of the um, classic painters um, of, from the Flemish era. And it's a nice, deep, um, what shall we say? It's, it, it is, it's scarlet. It's a scarlet color, yeah. Um, and it's 
not particularly um, noteworthy. I simply like the color. Um, it's kind of an old fashioned red, if that makes any sense. Um, and I have it in a Visconti uh, Van Gogh um, uh, Red Orchard um, pen, which I bought in Florence at the flagship store, the Visconti flagship store in Florence, Italy. Um, and it's, I love this pen, but um, yes, here we are. Okay, so this is Ackerman. And it's Scharlaken. I love the way the Dutch use S-C-H for Sch. Scharlaken um, von Jonstein. Groovy. All right. Okay. All right. That's... We're getting going now. All right. My... Desert Island Red. My absolute Desert Island Red is um, Herbin Rouge Hematite, um, or Rouge Hematite, if you like the English better than the original French. Um, and this is a beautiful ink. It normally has... Um, Sparkles, I have de-sparkled it. Um, I, they just kind of got on my nerves a little bit and I just liked the color so much. I didn't want the sparkles to detract from the color uh, because the color is really extraordinary. Um, and so I ran it through coffee filters um, to take the sparkles out. And now you can see that a little better. Um, it has a sheen that's just exceptional. Um, and I think it, you can see as it's drying, it's um, showing off some of the, the sheen. It's a kind of golden sheen. Um, there's a lot of pink in this red, but it's not... It's not like Yerori, which which is, I mean, you can see the 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 pink in that. That it, this is just like this. This is the perfect red, I think. It and I have it in a Pelican um, M six hundred red stripe, um, and so we are going to uh, and it comes out a touch dark in this pen because I have a, a fairly broad nib. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Hematite. We'll put the accent mark. Okay. Um, and that is uh, my single favorite of the reds. Okay. So, we're good on that. Um, another really strong uh, contender for top red, in my opinion, um, is Sailor uh, Shikiori Yodaki. Yodaki, which I believe means bonfire or summer bonfire. Um, it is a quite lovely... Um, a deeper red, um, which has uh, quite a bit of similarity to um, oh, uh, do, 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 Akane, yeah, um, Kobe Akane. Um, I think it's Kobe. It's um, one of the Japanese um, store um, inks. Okay. Um, anyway, and I have that in uh, my father's um, Mont Blanc 144 Bordeaux 
Um, um, this was left to me after my father passed. And it has Yodaki. Oh, somebody's falling. Don't do that. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, do, 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 do. okay. So this is, again, this ink has been sitting for a bit. Yes, it has. I am, I'm very bad about uh, keeping my inks fresher fresh um, as I ought to, but Shikiyori Yodaki, and it's rich, and it's just yummy, um, okay, there we are, okay, um, next, What's next? We, uh, uh, another similar ink is um, to the Shiki, uh, to the uh, Yodaki is Kobe um, number four, um, Ijinkan Red, Ijinkan, Ijinkan Red. Um, somewhat similar um, to that. A little different, um, again, going to the pink side. Um, which um, is not my favorite red. However, it does bring a brilliance to it that is hard to um, find fault with. It's so very brilliant. Um, and as the name suggests, um, it is the color of um, Japanese maples in the fall. Um, the leaves uh, turn to this, this kind of brilliant pinky red. Um, it's looking pinker than normal to me. I don't know why. Um, let's see if the pen has a more um, typical color. All right, and I have this in a Levenger True Writer. I think this was called Coffee and Cream or something like that. Um, and Momiji, yes, is a deep, I mean, it's, it's either a deep, deep pink or a pinkish red, but, um, and that's ju -ju -ju Japanese maple. Japanese maple leaves in the fall. So it's Momiji has a lot of packs a lot of meaning into that one word. Okay, very nice. Um, carrying on. Yes, rouge grena. Okay, rouge grena by Herbin is another uh, of my favorite reds. Um, this, is, this is shading again towards um, a different area of red, which is kind of the uh, burgundy um, dark red. Um, I find it very, it's a nice ink in the sense that it's very smooth. Um, it has kind of a velvety feel to it. I know that sounds kind of odd, but um, that it, that's how it feels to me. Um, I, it, unlike other inks, um, this is this is really um, um, it just flows so nicely. It's a it's a great um, ink in that sense. Okay. So this is uh, Urbain again, and I have this in a Pelican um, M200, I think it's called Ruby, um, that has a, a little bit of sparkle to it um, in, the, in the acrylic. Um, and I also have a stub nib um, or an italic nib, I think, I, yeah, Pelican calls it an Italian, italic nib. Um, and this is Rouge Grenat. Okay. 
which I believe is um, Garnet in French. Grenade with a D, Grenade, that's pomegranate. But the Grena um, in French is Garnet. And so it's supposed to look like a Garnet stone. All right, just a couple more that we're running out of space. So um, let's see where we want to go. Okay. Um, now another ink that is in between. I have a tendency to like the in-between colors, um, oddly enough. Um, and that is um, the Diamine or Cult Pens um, Robert ink. And it's an ink that's really extraordinary. This, uh, this ink was um, gifted, well, I, I don't know if I should use that word, it was sent as a gift by a good friend, um, and uh, it is greatly appreciated. This is probably, it's, it's more of a sheener than a lot of people might like, um, but it does side on the purple wine, um, wine color side, but the sheen is so intense that once it dries you're not even sure what color it is um because the the, the sheen is so intense um and i have that also um i have that in a um platinum 3776 um with music nib yes with music nib um and so we will see, this is called Robert. And in the pen, um, called pens. in the pen, um, the ink tends to come out um, more red um, and the swab tends to bring out the violet um, in that. There we go, we're gonna have to turn you that. And so, yeah, it has a very strong violet tone, but once this dries, um, you will see, I'm not holding it far enough. Well, there, no, 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 no there it is. Um, it, it really has this, what? Um, I'm gonna say gold-ish um, sheen to it. Um, typically there, there's a comp, the, the complementary color to, a, to an, um, uh, to an ink color is how the sheen comes out. Um, oftentimes with red, you'll have a green sheen or with, um, certain blues, you'll have a red sheen. Um, and this, uh, has, has a really strong, um, golden sheen. Okay. All right. We'll do one last one and that's it. So, um, I'm already... Uh, talking way too long. Um, uh, finally, we will do uh, a very interesting ink that I kind of just happened upon. Uh, the Ferris Wheel Press inks. Um, and this is their Royal Rhubarb. Um, and Royal Rhubarb is uh, an ink with... Um, Ooh, how to explain this shade? It's it's a it's a very interesting shade. Let's go this way and try it over here. Yes, yes. Okay. It has a darkish tone. I just am not sure how to um, you know describe this rhubarb it looks like rhubarb um if you know if you've ever had rhubarb growing in your garden um and then made pie um this is this is a pretty good color for that um so this is ferris wheel um press okay royal rhubarb and 
I have it in a vintage um, Waterman 100-year pen with a very interesting story. Very. Um, and in almost all of my vintage pens, inks come out much darker than they would in uh, modern pens. But there we are with the royal rhubarb. It's a very handsome color. Um, the Ferris wheel press inks have a have a reputation for tending to be light and watery. Um, not in this case. I've 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 used a couple of their inks, and they are light and watery. Um, this one is 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 a nice, rich ink. I like it a lot. Okay. So these are my reds, um, and or some of my reds, the reds that I love very much. Um, and I hope um, you see something here that you like and that um, you had not seen before. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. See you later.